This is the plaintiff, Rhonda Jones. She says she brought her car to the defendant's shop to be repainted, and they did a horrendous job. They forgot to paint her roof. They left her car with drip marks, and she's suing for the $3,000 she needs to repaint the car. These are the defendants, Larry Dixon and Pamela Prickler. Pamela says they didn't repaint her roof because there were no dents they had to repair and it didn't need painting. They tried everything they could to make the plaintiff happy and satisfied, but no amount of discussions with her was successful. And here they are. They're accused of painting a customer through the roof. The defendants have filed a counter suit for $410 for unpaid work. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she brought her car to the defendant for a paint job. Guy did a terrible job. There were drip marks all over it. But the defendant says the impatient woman demanded to pick up her car before it was done. It's the case of Hugh Stink. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Jones, you are suing L&D's Auto Body Services, represented here by Mr. Dixon and Pamela Prickler. You are the office manager for $3,000 that you say it's going to cost you to repaint your charger because they did such a terrible job. You are counterclaiming against her an amount that you had agreed earlier not to collect, but now that she's suing you, you want to collect. Um, let me hear from you first, Ms. Jones. Okay. I took my car to Larry. Uh, I had mechanical work done on it, and that was on the 7th. Uh, July 2nd. He finished on the 6th. At that time, I asked him, when could I bring my car in for repairs? He told repairs me Repairs or paint weeks. job? Like, what were you getting repaired? Uh, repair the body damage that I had on my car. Okay. So and, dents that you were going to take out, and what else? And also to paint my whole car, the original paint. Do you have anything in writing from him about how much he would charge you and what he would do specifically? No, we didn't have a written contract. We had a verbal understanding okay. of what I wanted done. Okay. So what happens? You leave the car with him for how long? I left. I took it in on the 16th, two weeks later, as he asked me to bring it back in two weeks. And he had my car up until uh, September 22nd, when I went to pick up my car. Why did you so have it for he, so long, Mr. Dixon? Uh, well, it had a lot of work had to be done to it. Um, all kind of scratches, dents, and bumper, front and rear bumper, and stuff like that. So there was a lot of body work that had to be done to it. All right, so when you uh, pick it up, Ms. Jones, why are you unhappy? As uh, soon as I picked it up, my sister and I went to pick it up. I was sitting in her car, looking at the back of my car. I could see paint runs running from my car there then. And I told her as I got up out, and then I explained to him and walked around the car with him and he showed him where all the paint job was bad and the running of the car. At that time- By running, you mean like dripping? You can see dripping? There's, listen, there's dripping. There's swirls in the car in the paint. It's just all over the car. Yeah, you see that? Like there's that's the bubbles in the car. And then there's the yeah, the dripping of the car if you spread it and then all that little fuzzy stuff. It's it's just a pa bad paint job all together. What am I looking at? That looks like scratches that weren't addressed. What's going on there, Mr. Dixon? You know what? Her car came out pretty good i mean it just it wasn't done at that moment um you know, i don't know what you're pure. saying it doesn't look pretty good to me what am i looking at there can i explain yeah I explain go ahead car? go ahead miss prickler okay those do look like scratches there were no scratches on the car yeah, when it left was, yeah, it let was, me finish telling them well, these are swirl mar what what are these swirls well in her complaint against l and d's she stated that there were waves uh a paint job is not well, finished until it's refined 
She stated in a complaint about the next gentleman who painted it that he put We're not going to talk it. yet about the next gentleman. We will talk okay. about the next gentleman Sorry, later because right now own. I'm still talking about this job, which doesn't look that good. I got to be honest with you. What am I it, looking at there, Ms. Prickler? Uh, you're looking at a car that had been sprayed but had not been through the final process. Well, then why are you telling her to pick it up? No, because she it has to wait three weeks. We don't bake here. It We're had, a small it shop. had to wait like three weeks. And we explained that to her. I'm sorry, I'm lost. I'm lost. Stop, 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 stop. According to you, every paint job has to cure three weeks in the possession of the driver? No, of the owner? she wanted her car back. Which is it? She wanted her car back prematurely, or she every paint back. job has to cure for three weeks in the Not possession of the job. owner? Not every paint job. I've, Ms. I've had a lot of paint Ms. jobs. Jones I've never seen her car this bad. Then. It doesn't matter. Why are you returning the car to? You're the ones who tell her when it's ready, and that's a terrible paint job. Come on, that it can't wasn't be finished, your best your work. Honor. Is that your best work, Miss Prickler? I don't paint. I run the office. Is that your office's best work? Come on, you're, you're, you know, once you, it, you're the one who wanted to pipe up and out. talk. That's why I'm asking you. Mr. Jackson, is this your best work? Because this doesn't look particularly good. No, it's not. It wasn't, it wasn't done. Then don't give it to her. If, it, if well, there's something else. Her car. I, see, here's a problem. I got to differentiate <laughs> between the people who aren't done working and she's this impatient person who just wanted her car back, even though you told her you weren't done, or the people who are hoping she'll be satisfied and you don't have to do it right. And that, you know, like, I don't see why you release it if this is how it looks. Now, having see, said that, what ends up happening? You pick up the car and he tells you, bring it back, I'll make it right. Correct, yeah. Ms. Jones? No. Yes. And do you bring it back? No. What do you do instead? I went and looked for someone else to do the paint job again. And how much did you pay that other person to do the paint job? $3,000. And now I understand that you were suing that person for $6,000, correct? Yes, I am. Okay. Taking them to court. Because they didn't do a good job either. Right. And Ms. Prickler, you're pointing that out to me because I guess I'm supposed to look at Ms. Jones and think she's litigious. <laughs> The plaintiff says she hired the defendant to paint her car, and they did a horrific job, and she wants her money back. The defendant claims they were only supposed to paint the plaintiff's damaged parts, but she's trying to get a complete car paint job out of them without paying for it, and that's not fair. Let's listen. Mr. Dixon, let's yes, talk about what happens. She comes in, and rather than paying what you say she owes, which is 2000 something, right? She ends up paying how much? 1700 Okay. And then she complains at the time, and uh, you tell her, you know what, I will return $1,000 and we will settle this case, correct? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, why is Ms. Prickler shaking her head? Go ahead, Ms. Prickler. Because Mr. Dixon forgot she still had a $500 balance. I don't she, care. Before I care she what ever it came to pick for. up the car, she I care what me it settled day. for. I think Mr. Dixon agreed to take $1,700 because normally you guys don't release a car without full payment. But either way, no, Mr. Do. Dixon agrees to go ahead and return $1,000. And you little by little return that $1,000. Correct, Ms. Jones? Yes, everything except for $90. Okay. Now, you are accepting oh. each of these payments, correct? There are receipts for different amounts of payment. Correct. Larry and I talked over the phone. Right, and you agreed the... to accept a $1,000 repayment. No. Yes, no. you did, because in each of these receipts, it says that there's X amount left on the $1,000 repayment. Mr. Oh. Dixon, did she agree to take the $1,000? Or did she yes, say, pay me a thousand, but I'm gonna sue you later for more? Well, she didn't say she was gonna sue me. She accepted the thousand dollars. So I made a $500 payment, a $250 payment, and a $160 payment. When I went to make the last payment, she did not wanna recept, she did not wanna take it. And the last payment was $90, correct? Right. Now, when you say she accepted the thousand dollars, I'm not talking about whether she took your money. I'm talking about beforehand, when you offered a thousand as settlement, did she say, yes, okay, let's settle? And we'll go yes. our own way. That was your impression, is that you were settling. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. agreed to it, yes. Yeah. All right, and because according had, to you, you know, Ms. Jones, you and... don't agree to it, so why are you taking the money if you don't agree to the $1,000 settlement? 
I did, what it was is I didn't think I'd get my money back from Larry. Initially, I told him I wanted my f full amount that I yes, had I paid know. him and back. And then you do the what we call in the law an accord and satisfaction. The law wants, courts want to encourage settlements. They don't want people okay. to trick people into giving them money and then come and sue. According to you, say, we'll talk about it. But he's not going to give you a thousand bucks if what you said to him is, we'll talk about it. And in every single receipt that he gets for his money, it says that the to he's writing in that the total is a thousand dollars. I'm now paying 500. I owe you 500 more. It is all spelled out there. Welcome back to the People's Court. The question, was this the paint job from you know where or is the plaintiff simply trying to get over on the defendant? Let's go back into the courtroom and find out. He's giving up something, you're giving up something. That's what a settlement is. If you're insisting okay. on the entire amount you paid him, he's not gonna give you $1,000 just to make you happy. He's only gonna give you $1,000 if you've agreed to settle it for $1,000. I find that this case was agreed upon and settled between the two parties. I find that on your lawsuit against him for three grand when what you paid him was 1700 and he's already paid you 910, you don't get to sue him for three grand because you guys settled this case. I find that you are entitled to the remaining 90 that you wouldn't accept earlier. As for the counterclaim against you for 410 remaining balance, because Ms. Prickler says, Larry forgot, blah, 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 blah. No, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You guys agree on a settlement, and the settlement is a new contract that supersedes all the prior contracts that were agreed upon. So pay her the yes. remaining 90, and you are done with Ms. Jones. And Ms. Jones, I wish you good luck on your new lawsuit against the next people who apparently also may have botched things, I don't know. But this case was settled by you guys for the $1,000. That is my finding. Pay her the remaining 90 on the counterclaim zero. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. Yes. Thank you. So the judge says the parties have agreed, they made an agreement, and that's it. If the defendant pays the plaintiff the remaining 90 bucks that he owes her, it's a signed and sealed, done, delivered deal. So uh, let me ask, first off, Mr. Dixon, Mr. Prickler, you will give her the $90 you still owe, and that's it. You don't get the $410 you were suing for. You okay with that? We tried to in the first place. Oh, yes, I agree. I tried to give it to her. She wouldn't take it. So, yeah, I I'll give it to her. Okay, good enough. But by the way, do you feel your paint job was terrible? She she says it was terrible. No, she just didn't let me finish it. I mean, you know, anytime you paint a car, I mean, the car has to cure first. It's going to take between two weeks or a month, and then we go over it, and water send it down, and puff it out. And all she had to do was just bring it back in two weeks. But she came back in four days and started crying about it, talking about, I want my money back, and I'm going to take it somewhere else, you know. So well, we're happy what, to settle with the remaining $90. That's what she did. Well, suppose she brings the car back to you. I, I don't know that we want her. Her sister's a very good customer. We yeah. we want to continue business with her, but I don't think we'll do business with Ms. Jones. Yeah. You think that's yeah. you're done now? Okay. Right. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. I understand that, too. All right, Ms. Jones, you heard uh, you heard uh, Mr. Dixon. He says he's going to give you the $90. What are you thinking? What, I what think, do you think about what that? I, I, what I think is... Uh, Larry, no, he did a lousy job. I took it to three other places here in the Akron, Ohio area, and they said how awful of a job it was. He should have never returned my car to me if it hadn't been finished. He had my car eight weeks exactly. There yeah, was mileage, excessive mileage put on my car. All of that with the thing that he had it for nine weeks. And each time I caught, he had some, a reason why he had caught COVID. He was in the hospital. They had painted all oh, my time that. another rough spot that I should put. I'll uh, never well, take You know, that that's why you sued him. Any reason. You settled with him. So well, that, it's come to okay an end now. Good that's enough. okay with me. All right, Everybody's that'll bring this case to a close. <laughs> and uh, I, hope you're, I hope everybody's happy. And that'll do it for this case. Harvey, what do you think? So... Doug, look, I mean, this is a case where there was a settlement before going to court. There may be a settlement that isn't particularly fair to one side, but if that side agrees to the settlement and it's executed, the reality is you can't get a second bite of the apple. Even if it's an unfair settlement, that's it. You cannot relitigate.
If a tenant has to sue their landlord because the landlord made false claims to keep the security deposit, where does the tenant have to file the lawsuit? Typically speaking, the lawsuit has to be filed in the place where the property is. So it doesn't matter if you moved somewhere else or the landlord lives somewhere else. It's a place where the property is. Right. And in particularly large jurisdictions like Miami, uh, there are many courthouses throughout the, the, the county, county. And right. the county is very, very big. Right. Very vast. Two and, and a half million people. Right. So it else. used to be right. that you could file at that tip of the county and kind of harass the other side. Right. You can't do that anymore. We cleaned that up, and it's the zip code where you where the property is. Ah, okay. So that's how it works. Uh, and you know, security deposits are a rich source of litigation in small claims courts Constant, throughout the country. Right? Constant. Yeah, because what landlords, some landlords will nibble at it enough to make it not worth your while to sue and just accept it. Right. And some, you know, uh, tenants create all kinds of damage and don't want to pay a penny. Right. And so it's a rich right. source of litigation. But I mean, you could have a fifteen hundred dollars security deposit, and the landlord. I mean, it keeps 200 bucks. You're right. like, oh, geez, right. what's the filing fee to go file it right. in the county but court? But it's huh? usually a matter of principle. So <laughs> right. um, no, 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 that's, it happens. and it's, That's what keeps you in business. That's right. The principle. That's right. The principle. But, you know, matter. the whole dynamic between um, what's tenant damage and what's normal wear and tear is so subjective. Right. There's this whole spectrum of, you know, how long should the carpet last? Right. How long has it been there? And, you know, you and, trashed my carpet. No, I didn't. That's as normal I tell wear and tear. Litigants, whether they're landlords or tenants, you always need to take pictures oh, before yeah. the move-in of what it looked like. If you're the tenant, take a nice, slow, painfully slow right. video of everything that is wrong in each little right. spot, not because you need it fixed, but because you don't want to get blamed for it. Right. But it's the same for the landlords. If there's a stain on the carpet, you're going to have to prove that wasn't there when they moved in. Right. And you don't want to have that you know, litigation and, and right. with them. So it you want to have pictures sides. of how it looked when you turned it over. Sure. Another thing that landlords do, which is a very good idea, is they have the tenant sign exactly that I am receiving it in good condition mm. and there are no damages. Right. So th those are all good ideas to protect right. both sides so that you can prove up your case. Absolutely. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, they say. Take pictures. Well, that'll do it for this session of the People's Court. We'll see you next time.